Good morning, guys. Um, thanks for thanks so much for joining me again. I know uh, we talked a little bit before me pressing the uh, record button, and I kind of wanted to talk about something that was really interesting. Um, and um, let's go. Maybe introduce ourselves first, and we can go go from there. Okay. So I am Carlos. I am the payroll pro from Heartland, and uh, Jennifer. And I am Jennifer Carter, personal injury and workers' compensation attorney. And I'm Sanjay Sarbawal from Sarbawal Law, I'm the employment lawyer for the group. Um, I was sharing with you guys what, was, what I thought was very interesting is uh, I recently had a client that was a former uh, employee that was fired over text. And um, while I was talking about that, it turns out this person, employer, also was using, uh, which I thought was only a credit card processing company, they were also using it for the payroll because when I asked for the payroll journals or the payroll records or the wage statements, this person basically had nothing. And um, I mentioned to Carlos, like, was this a normal thing? And Carlos, you want to tell me what you think so, out of that? So there's nothing wrong with using a credit card processor for if they do payroll, if they're a payroll processor. So a payroll processor needs to do certain things, right? They need to give, give you actual copies of payroll journals, payroll reports, and give you actual copies of your tax returns. And if they are not doing these things, then really it's not truly a payroll service. Uh, so those are kind of the red flags to look for. Um, they should be easily reading, be able to read what you paid an employee at any given time over any given pay, time period, and also get the tax returns that you're supposed to, that's supposed to have been filed for you at the end of the quarter, because if you get audited, you need to have an actual copy of the tax returns. You can't provide them a facsimile of what they said that they filed. You need an actual copy of the tax returns. So those are a couple of things that this other uh, company wasn't doing that Heartland does. Uh, Heartland, although we are a credit card processor, we also do payroll, but we're a payroll service from providing a, a client uh, service representative, someone that they can talk to, uh, to making sure they're covered on the HR side. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit more about the HR side, Sanjay? Yeah, you know, I think it's really interesting that, you know, the new technology, is, there is a convenience factor. And I kind of understand, sometimes I can understand why people want to use certain uh, uh, technologies because so they're easy to use. However, you can't use that technology for everything. I think in this instance, what was also happening is that there's a lot of guidelines for, I know for me, the red flags are, I mentioned the wage statements or uh, the timekeeping. Those are things that I think uh, a payroll company like yours would provide, but I think other companies may give the impression that it's okay that they provide those services but they don't and i think there's a confusion for a lot of small businesses they don't know well what is a payroll company really supposed to be doing for them and i think this is where i always like introducing them to you because at least you take the time to explain to them here's what needs to happen perfect and, and yeah that's a conversation i have for with any small business owner sometimes clients come and say hey you know what i just need payroll i don't want to worry about hr i don't need time and attendance and I say, fine, you know, let, I, I'm going to meet you where you're at. Um, but just be aware that we can do these things for you. And it's important, especially if the company is growing, that you're, you're cognizant, that you're paying attention to HR issues. Because if your company is growing, they're going to come up. And so you need to have that resource so at the point when you're ready. We're, we're ready to jump in and say, okay, we can give you a handbook. We can write your policies. We can write you, uh, we can put together your new hire paperwork. We can get you an HRIS system where your employees automatically get hired onto the payroll and there's no manual process. Um, that's all included. So it makes it very, very simple. So Jennifer, you had a question? So does Heartland actually help with training their HR department or, or helping form that actually at the company? That's a very good question, Jennifer. Typically, the companies that we work with um, are going to be a very sightless, right? They're going to, a lot of them are going to be very small startups to 50, 60 employees uh, to 100 plus employees. The different size companies are going to have different needs. A small 5, 10 employee company, they're going to have a different need. So they're, they're probably going to be new at the whole HR functionality altogether, right. not a clue. The owner is going to be doing HR. Uh, they're not going to be hiring anyone to do HR. Um, they're, they're typically wearing those hats themselves. We can give them that HR functionality and give them a resource for someone to reach out to when they have any questions or stuff like that. Okay. That's now, now you get to the larger size, 40, 50, 60 employees, you get into that range, then it starts making sense whether they should hire an HR director. Um, typically when people bring in an HR director is that they're usually not trained in HR. 
This is someone that maybe has an accounting, has been processing payroll, and they graduated up to say, hey, while well, you're doing payroll, you might as well do HR too. Or you're, you're so good at what you do, I'm gonna have you do HR as well. And so these people are not trained in HR. They don't have the resources. They don't know how to get those resources. So we provide that for them. So we, we'll help them, we'll, we'll, we'll get them trained up, or we'll answer any questions they have, we'll help, we'll help them with hiring, and provide those resources, okay? Now, Sanjay, you had a question? Yeah, well, you know, the reality is, you know, uh, I always struggle with this because I always think of you, I'm so glad I can always rely on you because like recently I just told you about someone that, you know, they, they've been in business for a long time, but they, they didn't have a lot of the basic things that I expect a business that's been in business for so long. Uh, this particular business, I, I think has been in business for like 15 years and they didn't have the handbooks, they didn't have the time clocks, they were just doing, and things worked out, right? Until they don't. So they don't. Yeah. And that's on a wake up call. And I think it's always a struggle for me sometimes to explain to clients that, hey, you know, if you don't uh, take care of this, this is going to turn into a huge liability. And I think this is where it helps to have someone explain, like someone like you can explain, here's what you're really paying for. And, and like you said, most of these businesses, they grow organically, right? They're, they're, it's a guy, he starts his business, he hires one or two employees, maybe a family member. He's got four employees, he's got to bring someone else on. And all of a sudden, he's, he's six or seven employees. He's still thinking of himself as that guy just on his own when he's actually got a business, right? right? So at the point where I'm brought in, sometimes it's, it's not a question of getting them on HR and getting them time clock and all that. It's just getting him to see his business like a business. And this, a business is something separate than yourself, right? And a lot of business owners, they don't see that, that, that possible detachment. So then it becomes a, a, a conversation of how are, you, how are you using your business? What is your business? Do you have a business or did you just create a job for yourself? Right. Well, I think that's the, the struggle, right? Sometimes people then re also resist because they're like, well, why do I need to pay for this now? I've never had to pay this for this in the past. And it's such a struggle when it's also been a business that's been running because to them, they, to them, it seems like an extra expense. They're like, well, I didn't have to pay for payroll before. I didn't have to pay for workers' comp before. I didn't have to pay for X, Y, and Z before. And I'm like, that's true. But the whole point is that one thing, and it's going to be a win. It's not an if. When things go wrong, you're going to regret not having these things in place. And um, it's really important for people to be aware of that. It's like they weren't aware of the issue or even the question to ask or the concern to have. Yeah. And with people like that, I love working with them because it just becomes a question of talking about processes and procedures to put in place. So that, that way we could standardize them. So that, that way they could focus on growing their company instead of focusing on paying their employees, worrying about their employees getting hurt how do I have this conversation with my employees? We provide all that. And most of the, most of the time, we, we, they realize that it's a very, very cost-effective method of protecting themselves. I mean, you buy car insurance, you buy home insurance. This is like having insurance against the IRS in the state of California, as well as protecting yourself, um, saying this in a nice way, protecting yourself from lawyers. Right. <laughs>